Hi, Joe here at Willie Cottage. If you're watching later, what's going on with my head? Do you know it looks like a bouffant today? I haven't got a toupee on, I promise. It's been washed. And I've got this new conditioning stuff for my hair, and it just. Oh. Anyway, I'm up in the studio today. I'm running out of yarn for my weaving. So I thought while I'm up here, I will blend up the back that I need for doing downstairs. I've got enough linen left to ply with that. So I'm going to have to order myself some. So I have to wait to Friday to payday before I can order any more yarn. And then it'll be here for next Wednesday and then I should be able to carry on with my weaving. But I've just released the um, Batty Club, May, um, April Batty Clubs. And I filmed it last week, but I didn't film the process of how I made... Um, did the blending. Now I do have videos down on my timeline um, of how to... Um, double and triple card fleece it's like once you've you've washed them and you want to get them to a point where you can actually spin from them on your on your card or on your blending board um, and i have done a couple of videos like that but what i thought i would do today because i did mention it on my live chat the other day on saturday on instagram um to show you how i do my blending and how I blend f mixed fibres together, especially those really soft flighty ones. And I've just sent out the email. Hold on a minute. Iona, stop licking in your nether regions. Stop being naughty. Right. So, I thought... What was that? Where have I lost my train of thought? Yes, yeah, so I've just released my emails for May's Bike Club. Um, and I'm going with Yak and South American Top. Now, South American Top is a really really nice wool and it is a mix of um, I think three or four different breeds of South American shape um, so things like oh do you know I can't even think of the names I've just found the, the nose off me mini printer so yeah it's a mix of different breeds of American sheep um but it's lovely and bouncy wool and it dies up quite a bit like a merino and it is nice and fine it's got a rough micron count of um i would say between 27 and 30 31 ish but it still makes for a really lovely wool that you can wear for knitting with and it spins up like a shetland so you can get it really really fine if you want to and it's got a decent crimp to it so i wanted something with a good crimp but i didn't want something to be harsh on the skin like like a tease water. I mean, I don't mind tease water, but some people don't like the feel of it. Some people don't like the feel of BFL neither. So I thought, well, what would pair up really, really well? And I nearly went with Perrindale. And I thought, no, it's, it's too English. It's too too much of a British, British sounding will. So I thought South American top blended with yak. Now, if it, no one, don't worry. I've sent pictures out. There's a picture on my, on my stories on my Instagram. It's on the email. Now, Yak is really lovely, it's very fine, it's very downy, it's very fluffy. So, I'm blending the South American top exactly the same way as I blended the car, uh, the D-haired baby camel with the Corridale last month. Oh my lord, that will turned out so, so, so fluffy. Have I got any of that um, camel left? Where did I put it? I did have it the other day. I had a bag full, or half a bag full of one of the bags it's always the same isn't it when you're looking for something you can never quite find it i might have actually used it in a blend um oh here we go i've got a bit in here now ooh, this is the d head baby camel look how fluffy it is. now you could i mean you can spin it on its own but it's one of those yarns that you have to tread on really really slowly if you want to spin with this so these sort of fibers you want to blend and you want to blend well and properly so that is in with that because that went with another bat that i did the other day um so yeah i thought joe do a blending video while you stood up here chatting and if nobody turns up then you've got it put to one side and it's done and i'm a few minutes earlier than i would normally be anyway oh a fresh cup of coffee do you know it's freezing here today so what should we what should we blend up so i'm thinking i'm thinking i need a fiber so you can see exactly what it is that i'm 
I'm blending and how I'm blending it, but you can see the transition. Um, I've got some of this, but what I'll do with this is I'll get the blending board out and I'll blend with that. So you can see how to do it on a blending board as well, in case you haven't got a drum card. I can know everybody's got drum carders, but majority of us have all managed to find somehow or another a second hand, make your own or buying brand new blending boards. So the blending board's up there. I think I spotted my needles the other day. This mission to find these flaming knitting needles, I tell you. So I've got one's here. And I do have my dowlings there. So I will get the blending board out as well and show you how to blend your wool to make mini bats on your blending board and blending downy fibres like that. Now I'm just thinking, just I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Okay, what can I use? I do have, I do have in here, um, we'll go with this. This is fawn baby alpaca. So just like, just like the camel, it is very, very fine. And these sort of fibres don't really have a crimp. It's more of a hair. So if you want me to do that today, I will do. I do need to blend up my bat though and get it spun off from a weaving. Otherwise, Anne is going to throttle me because she's still waiting for me to catch up with her so I can get the pattern cut out for my coat. So what shall I blend it with? Shall I stick with a natural or shall I go for a wool that I've dyed up? I'm just looking at my board. Let's see what's on there. What's on there on the door? Shetland Pink and cream You'll be able to see that no problem won't you I've got that one Oh, I have got Saying that if I go with a Shetland that might be quite nice that and then I can blend that up another time and this is a blend of um, Shetland with silk and there's a natural um, a white cream Shetland with silk so I think I will blend this up and you can see how I do it and then we'll get the blending board out and I will do a different type of fiber and show you how to blend that up on the blending board I think it's probably the best way to go with this today so I'll do is I'll just split this up into sections so you want to get your roving open it up there is a natural opening when you get roving especially if you've dyed it at home it all seems to sort of want to just stick together but there is a natural opening in the actual roving itself and just pull it out tease it out there we go so I'm gonna strip that in half Oop. and I'm gonna split it again I suppose you can call this a a one-on-one -on -one blending session so you actually get to speak to me if anyone turns up oh dear do you know i've got the runniest nose the house is so cold i've just been out it's, we've not had rain for over a week it's looking like it might be rain for an another week before we see any rain we're supposed to be getting down to minus five they reckon at some points at next month which will be the coldest may in 25 years Oh dear, it is proper chilly. I've had to just go out. I've got the cheek as well to go out and have to um, water my garden because it's not had no rain for a week. And I've just put a load of new plants out in the bedding. Right, so they're all stripped up into sections and now I've got eight skinny sections which I'll probably end up with two sections on each layer. And then I have got this alpaca. No, it's not alpaca, it's baby llama very very finey so look at the way that just dangles like that so i'll split that into four and then i will split it again for each layer of shetland that i do because i want this to be really really blended through so i'm going to tilt you down so you can see what i'm doing anyone pops in i am here i'm not ignoring you guys so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run this through And it just means that you get a really good consistency of fibres all the way through. Oh, you're tangled up there. I nearly dragged you out of position. There we go. Right. 
Right, so that's first roll. And you know what? I think I'm going to be really naughty and add in some Angelina as well. This is another thing to do with Angelina. So when you're putting it in, make sure it's spread throughout because you don't want clumpy bits really. I mean, I know I put them in willy nilly when I'm blending, but if I just spread them along and it makes this more blingy, and then these are all blending together, then I'm getting my alpaca, llama, Joe llama. It's so soft. And I'm just going to blend that through and then just repeat. So I'm just going to keep repeating this. And it's got this has got silk in it. Now it's got the the fawn baby llama through it. I just unplug this bit here because it might tangle up as I'm going through and cause me a bit of work. I'm not going to put Angelina on this next one because I don't want it over faced with Angelina, but I'm going to add in a bit more of this flighty fibre. Again, you can, you can spin this on its own, but you're going to have to put in quite a bit of twist with it because it's so soft. So I'm going to go back on with my Shetland Silk Blend that I've dyed in these gorgeous fuchsias and the different tones in there. Raspberry it is, not fuchsia. So I'll just carry on doing this. Hello whoever that is, it's just turned up. I'm doing a little blending demo while I'm up here. I am up here blending my um, will for my, my weaving. Hiya Bridie, just in the car driving back from buying pretzels for the football tonight. Well, if there's any excuse to buy pretzels, I can eat pretzels, they've not got any soya in them. So I'm just doing a little blending. I'm supposed to be blending up my, my will for my weaving today, Bridie. Um, you should, your, uh, oh, what's it called? Your bike club should be there today at some point. It was posted on Friday. So I thought I would do um, just a chat about how to blend up fibres properly so you get a good consistency. So I'm just doing a double card in and then I'm, um, I'll am i do it on the blending board as well so I can show you how to do it on the blending board. And I've just announced it's Yak and South American top for May's Batty Club. But the colours are a surprise, and as it's my birthday month, I'm going with neons just to wind a few of these up. So that, I think, will look absolutely fantastic. So yeah, so I thought, instead of me doing the video where I show how to do blending downy fibres in with wool, I thought I would just do it here while I'm, while I'm upstairs in the studio anyway. So I've got this Shetland for Silk Blend. And I'm blending it with Angelina and Baby Llama. And then I could just, did I just put one on? No, I didn't. I've just blended that, haven't I? One in there. And I've just done Angelina on that layer. Miss Angelina on the next layer and I've done some more. So alternate rows, I'm doing Shetland on one and then I'm doing the down fibre and then I'm doing Angelina and then I repeat but miss out the Angelina on the next two layers. Now, you've gone for pretzels. Have you gone for the sour cream cheese ones or the au naturel salty ones? I prefer the salty ones. Being brought up in Germany for about six, seven years of my life, I am addicted to pretzels. I do love them. That you need like at least two cans of uh, two cans of beer or two shandies to go with them. Right, I feel like I've missed something. Right, it's Angelina next. A bit more Angelina, this beautiful fuchsia pink Angelina in there. I think I can squeeze in a little bit more. Adding the 
いた。Squeeze any more Shetland in? I think I can. The only thing about double and triple carding your fibres is that it gets really, really airy the more you do it. So you may have got a hundred grams natural with salt scattered on top, German lady. <laughs> Yet still to this day, I would rather have cold meats and cheeses any time of the day for eating than snack on. But though my auntie Josepha, she used to make the most amazing cakes with guns when we went to stay with them again because I was brought up with a German Polish family when I was um, a tot. We moved in then. So we lived with um, Gotthard, who was Polish, and his wife, Josefa, who was a German, and they had three kids, Jürgen, Brigitte, and Sabrina. And I was brought up with them from literally under a year, well, just about a year old-ish, not even, actually, probably younger than that. And then we lived with them until I was nearly four. And I think one more layer of Angelina and I will save this last piece for doing a blender board to show you how I do that and I'm going to put the last piece of Angelina in yeah I love Germany I do miss it a lot I always thought of it like germ, um, like Scotland, but with sunshine and cleaner. So I'm going to take this off the board now, off the board, off the drum carder, and I'm going to strip it into sections, and I'm going to blend it again. But I do the next blending a little bit different. And I've, as I say, I've shown this before, when I've shown how I, I card my fleeces so I can actually spin with them. So I'm just going to loosen it off, grab that troll by its hair and do the roly-poly all the way down and then round one more time so I catch any loose fibres that are left on my drum card up and then I'm cleaning at the same time Angeli uh, Angelica makes German tummy cake, it's delicious I make a really really nice um, German coffee cake the one with the crumb on the top of it it's like the nice sponge underneath and then you use the last of the dough and you, as a crumb, and you sprinkle over the top, and it's got chunks of apple in it. Right, so there is the bat. Oh, so I'll just lift you up a little bit. Yeah, they make the most amazing cakes. We used to have, when we lived in Minden, we used to have a bakery literally just up the street from us, five minute walk. And I had to go in from a, from a um, we had to go in for the rolls every day when we were back home from boarding school, my mum would send me up to the bakers, go and get our rolls. And uh, that's where I fell in love with um, with proper pastries. Love a pastry with the fruit on the top of it and a bit of icing. So what I'm gonna do now is I split that bat in half and then I split it again into eight skinny pieces, okay? And then I'm just gonna open it. So that way is top and bottom. So you've just seen me layer it up. But if you look in there now, see all the layers through there? That's the side that I'm going to blend it on. And I want all those bits of alpaca, all those faint pieces of alpaca, llama, all those faint pieces of that fawn colour are in there. And I want to catch that so it blends in together. So that's one. And then the next one... I'm going to open it, I'm going to, so the top and bottom, I'm going to pull it outwards a little bit, fan it out a little bit, draft it out sideways, not lengthways, and I'm going to sandwich those together. I 
and that means that those fibres will now start to displace themselves in between the wool and already I can feel the difference in this Shetland wool in comparison to what it was before when it was just the roving there is a different texture to it so once again there's the top part there's the bottom part and I'm going to turn it on its side so I can see all the layers and I'm just going to gently open it up and blend that through marzipan my love for marzipan comes from Germany marzipan and dark chocolate I've never been a milk chocolate fan so next one it, there's the sides there so there's the top and the bottom and I'm just going to literally fan it out a little bit and I can feel the fibers pulling against me because they're not all going in a straight line now I'm pulling them so they're crisscrossing over each other but that will help trap those flighty fibers and the angelina in so when you're spinning with it it just feels different and at the same time while I'm doing this I'm trapping more air into it so what you'll be getting in fact is um, one second. What you will be creating is more of a, a really airy bat so it's really bouncy and fluffy because you're trapping those airs in air in by blending it again so there's the top and the bottom that's the sides so i'm just stripping each section down into smaller sections to make my life a little bit easier so i'm going back in on the side you can see the lines of the layers that i've done Just card that off and then again top and bottom sections just waft it out a little bit and I can feel it pulling inside and you can actually see where the fibers instead of they're going straight forwards they're now crisscrossing over because I've opened it up in such a way that it ends up more like a worsted wool because when you're, and I did this video last year, um, to make a lovely woolen yarn, you want your fibres to go straight, okay? If you want a worsted wool, which has more volume to it and it has a more rustic look to it, you want the fibres to cross over. So by doing this, or if you're just getting pieces of um, fibre, let me think, let me think, so all the, all the wool, on the roving is going in the same direction so if you spun that off already you're going to be getting yourself like a, a proper woolen yarn if you pull that and then pull another couple of sections and then put like open it up and then put them in that way into your drum carder and then crisscross the other piece over the top of that as you're going in so they're straight and then some going in that way and they're dragging so they're all going to be sick crisscrossing over each other you're actually trapping more air in there so you get more of a a worsted feel to the yarn it's more bulkier it um it's got more air trapped in it which makes it ideal for doing iron knits but then it's all down to your preparation as well when you're spinning it and how you spin not everybody likes to spin in a worsted fashion but to be honest with you i don't really know the difference in spinning in a worsted or in a woolen I just spin but I always think it, the preparation is all in the back and how the fibres go so, I'm really trying to just pack that down I'm going to try so I've done half of that bat already plunk that over there I'm going to take this off because I can't even get any more on there without having a proper old fight Take that off, grab the other roly poly, over it goes, over it goes, over it goes, and there we go. So, all those fibres and the Angelina and the silk with the, the silk with the um, Shetland are all properly blended into that, and that's just by carding it twice. Okay, so card it twice, you could card it again for a third time. Um, all you're going to get is a more bulky fibre than that one. That one seems a little bit more rigid in complexity. 
so there's a lot, a lot more to it because the fibres have gone in slightly different directions from each other because of the way that I've gone in, lay it sidewards and then lay it top on top, lay it sidewards then top, sidewards and top and then it just means that there's a really good consistency. You could quite easily go in and blend this again on your drum carder just for a bit more finesse through in your blending if you feel it needs, if you're still finding, if I was to do that in white with a white fibre in there you would see what I mean, maybe sections like there that I want to hide that a bit more in into the wool but to spin that now will spin up an absolute dream but it's lovely it's getting that dusky hue on there from the um the llama the fawn llama that's in that in comparison to what this looked like where you've got the layers in between and the blobs of Angelina just by doing it twice there's you can't see any differentiation of blobs I mean you can see there's bits and pieces in there but it's equal throughout all that sparkle in there it's equal throughout the actual bat so that's how to do your blending of downy fibers or very fine fibers silks that's a good one to do um, if you're spinning um, you want to card up neps card that through twice and that means that if as long as those fibers or grab those um, woolly neps, especially those popping candy ones and I have been known to write that on my um, my ingredients list on the back of my bats you get my little card in there and it'll say popping candy and it's actually the woolly neps, the really thin fine woolly neps these ones which I don't do often because a lot of people hate them but the way that I blend them in is usually because the, the wool's been double carded but those little neps there I usually dye them up separately and stick them in pots so they're all colour coded. But yeah, so things like that, things that are really fine and flighty. If you want something that's got full of sparkle and you want lots of sparkle but you don't want lumps and bumps of um, Angelina everywhere or Stellina or Trilobal or whatever it is that you want to blend into your wool and you want an even consistency, double or triple card it. If you double card it and then you go and use that to mix with different colours, um, on your drum carder then it'll be three times just like the batty clubs have just been three times carded as well because they were carded twice each color individually to get the camel in there and then i added in the um the colors at the end so there was three carded carded three times so what i'll do now is i'll just grab my blending board and i'll show you how to do this on your blending board because as i said not everybody's got at home a drum carder which is fine. We've all makeshift, begged, borrowed and stolen. Found a second-hand one if you're really, really lucky. Or like me, made out of an Ikea board. So I'll just clear up my mess. So who's playing football tonight then, Bridie? I don't pay no attention to football whatsoever. It bears me no happy joys at all. I'll leave him to it. I usually binge watch TV. You know what I'm like. I like my YouTube channels and I'll stick something on and he sits with his earphones on and watches football on the um, mobile phone. Mm. Oh, that's nice coffee. So that's another love of mine, Germany. Proper coffee. It's got to be percolated. There's no such thing as coffee if it comes out of a jar. Right, so I'm just going to tilt you down here like that. Might actually, I'll plug in the little light that goes with this as well, I think, and I'll plug in my phone as well while I'm here. And I will show you how to do blending of downy fibres on your blending board. Let me just put this light on. There we go. That's a bit better. If I can't see questions, well, I'll try my best to think, eh? but it's really hard trying to do this and not see. So I have got this BFL and it's got silk in there as well. I don't think it's the kid mohair. This is left over from Christmas Advents, this is. So I'm going to rip it up into sections. And I'm going to add another fibre to it. Shall we go... What shall I go with? What shall I go with? Let me see. I know what I'll do. I'll add a silk to it. Come out of the way, doglet. I will add a 
silk to knit. Move that out of the way. And I've got some oh, lovely bright pink silk. Mulberry silk. So all I'll do is I'll add that. Oh, if I can get it to let me have some. And I will split that into little sections as well. Right. So I'm going to pull those sections apart. And I'm just going to draw it down my blending board. I ended up, I did this blending board video a couple months ago. And I think it's the most watched video that I have had. And it's over a hundred views. Couldn't believe it when I looked at it the other day. So literally pull from the top and make sure if your knuckles are dragging along the base, then you're doing it right. You can't have a fluffing hobby without having to draw blood on it first. So I'm literally just going to drag that all the way down so there's fibres trapped in there. Okay. And then I'm going to get some of this mulberry silk. And I'm going to pull that and drag that down. It's really, really fine. This is a good example to do on your blending board because a lot of people like to use silks in their little their little Rov Rolex. So by doing this, I'm just going to put a bit more over this side and a bit more over this side. And I'm going to then get some more of the silk, open it up a little bit over the top of there and a bit over there you just want to, you want to make sure that you don't have too much hanging over the edge of your blending board when you're doing this and it's mostly for tidiness because it just all flumps up at the end when you're rolling up your roll legs where's me where's the card oh, there it is so push it down press it in there we go and get some more drag it all the way down the opposite way direction to my needles are going that way and I want to come down my board this way I'm gonna get a bit more purple just to finish over this side so it's all a little bit more even try and fill in some of these blank spaces there we go and then a bit more silk try and open it up a little bit so it doesn't end up all in one place but it's all right we're going to take it off in a minute and we're going to re-blend it on the board and you can do this for all those flighty fibers like the camel the yak the cashmere mink is another one i was going to get some mink because the next few months from batty clubs i'm just going to do some really special blends so of like mixed fibres because last month was um, llama, this month's been baby camel, May is going to be a yak blended with wool, um, June I haven't decided yet I'm still looking um, yeah so I'm still looking and July I'm going for something really special so we will um, it will be my last month and I'm going to go out the box a little bit in my price range so there we go so the last piece of mulberry silk going on to this bat and then I'll card it down actually I might card it down now because I've still got a bit more wool to go on and you can see all those fibers trapping in there in this mini bat so I'm going to try and just catch those in there and then use the last of this silk and then top it off with a bit more wool again and really it's just it's the same principle as doing it on my blending board only difference is a lot of people especially if, they, if you're um spindle spinners like drop spindles turkish spindles uh cake spindles what else is what other type of spindles are they top lap the tabletop spindles you know where you use the supportive bowl um try to think there must be a couple of other ones so they like to use rolags some of them for doing that type of spinning just easier to control 
So last piece of wool going on here now. I'm trying to find areas that they're quite blank. Well, not blank, but the needles are protruding a little bit more than anywhere else. Even this side out over here. There we go. And last piece. Oh. There we go. So I'm literally just going to grab my dowels. Underneath the end pieces, down the bottom where you when your, your tines are pointing that direction, okay? So you want to go in the opposite direction to the direction you were going in the first place. So you're not going to be dragging or pulling or anything like that. You just want to get it off the board. So sometimes it just helps to use your dowels or your knitting needles or your drumsticks or whatever it is that you've got to hand. And there you go. You have a mini bat. Okay. So there is structure in that. There is structure in it. Nice, light, airy, fairy. Now I want to double cut. I want to card it again. So I'm going to take it into strips. So take that off. Take that off. And just keep doing that into nice, I would say they're about an inch and a half to two inches thick strips. And I'm going to put them back on the blending board again. There we go. So I'm literally just going to do exactly what I did already. And what I'm doing is help spreading the fibres of the silk through the wool so I end up with a more even consistency. And I'm going to keep on doing this. You don't have to draft it out or anything like that. Well, you don't want to catch it on the bottom though. You might want to work with smaller pieces if that helps you. There we go. So I'm just moving more of the silk fibres along the board. So they're not all in one place. Oh. There we go. The card there it is. Couple of pieces left. You can see that they're spread out a lot more now on this board than they were just in one solid section. So I will take this piece off though and move it over here. When you do it on the card on the card and on your blending board, you may find that you want to do it maybe three times just to make sure that those silks don't stick in clumps. There we go. I'm gonna just card that down one more time. Ow, that hurts. If I haven't drawn blood, I'll be surprised. Every time I use this flaming thing, it's a death trap. Right. There we go. Apply a bit of pressure on there, make sure those silks do as they're told. And then I'm just going to take that off there because it keeps catching on the bottom. So I'm just going to.
this one's gone off and that one's gone off. I'll put them back on in a minute. Now, if this was just a natural fibre or a solid colour that you're blending to combine your fibres together, like I'm doing now with these, or with um, what other fibres could you be using? You could be using Sarah Silk Oil, um, your rose fibres, Tencel. Then you're going to see them blending through a lot more, a lot better, I should say. So I'm just going to flip this up again. And then peel that off. Easy as. And there you go. That is blended through with a lot more consistency than it was the first time around. One sec. There you go. These neons anyway, so it's got this bright pink in there. And you've got it on the back there, but it's a, there a lot more than it would be if you just blended it, through, if you did it on your blender board in the streaks. When you're spinning it, you're going to end up with like long clumps of it coming out when you're spinning. If you blended that on your blender board and put it through and did it twice, put it through your drum card or two or three times, it's got a lot more even consistency throughout. There's the those strands there, and you've seen what it was like the first time, they were big lumps. But now you should be able to spin with that and it will stick to the fibres a lot easier doing it that way. So, anyway, I hope that helped. Sometimes you, just doing things and taking a bit more time. I could probably do with blending that through another, at least one small. But I'll put that through the drum card and I will blend it up for our listing for next week with that bright pink. So I think it'll look really, really nice. Not too wishy-washy. I think I may even add, I've got some indigo denier nylon over there hanging up on my thingy. Or I may even add some of that um, spearmint mulberry silk in with it and top that off just to give another dimension of pop of colour when blending with those. So that, that and that look so cute together. So that'll be in the listings for next week. That looks really nice, that. Accidental. I still haven't done me blending for me back for, for spinning downstairs. I'm such a swine. So I think I will be at 43 minutes. So I think, Bridie, I'll let you go and drive off and get home with your pretzels and get yourself sorted out for football tonight. <laughs> I am going to now blend up my back, Joe, and go off and do a bit of spinning. My jumper's looking amazing. I finished my body on my jumper the other day. Dead chuffed bits for myself. I'm just going to tie in my last strand and I'm on my arms now. And it's so annoying. How come they can't design cable knits, like the interchangeable cable needles for arms where you don't have to stretch or do some sort of jiggery poggery yoga stance with your flaming needles when you're doing your arms? So that's taking me the longest bit to do. So I'm on the pattern on that. So I'm dead chuffed to bits. I'm so chuffed with myself. I'm now looking for colours that I can do a second jump because I tell you what, that boiling knits um, Nordiska pattern is such a joy to knit up. I definitely will be doing another one. So I have to save up the pennies and buy myself some more wool because I can't pinch any at the shop. So anyway, I'll let you get off, Bridie. Thank you, sweetie, for joining me today. I hope those blending tips helps you. Um, yeah, so I need to get, next week I will be weaving. I will have some no, more linen yarn because I'm running out. I've got a blend up 100 grams. I've got enough linen downstairs to spin that off with and I have to order in some more. So hopefully I've got some in stock. Um, but yeah, that's what I need to go and do. I need to go and do something. I need to stop sitting on my bum. I've been out and watered the garden this morning. It's like minus 10 outside. Anyway, take care of yourselves. This will be um, on the channel to watch tomorrow afternoon and if you Bridie if you know anybody that um, wants to collaborate with me for batty clubs I did put in the email but I'm looking for somebody to help me with because I run out with stitch markers in August I haven't got anything for August clubs so I need a UK crafter artist that does their own cards postcards whatever badges pins stitch markers 
nicky nacky news that can go on my bike club so if you know anyone give them a nudge and tell them to give me a shout i will speak to you next week if not i'll catch you on saturday take care bye thanks for watching like and subscribe